It's Christmas time and you know what that means. Though <laughs> so it definitely sounds like it, what you're currently hearing is not actually a Frank Sinatra song about hot tubs and Christmas time. It's actually a song generated entirely by an AI or artificial intelligence to mimic the sound of Frank Sinatra. The way it's able to capture his vocal style and just style of music in general is really impressive. This song and many others like it that we'll soon check out was generated by Jukebox. Jukebox, made by OpenAI, is a new AI or neural network that can generate music, including singing, across many different genres and popular artist styles. This work is really groundbreaking because there haven't really been AIs that can generate a whole piece of music, including vocals, before. There are a ton of really cool examples of the music that Jukebox can generate, and we'll check out a bunch of them in a moment. But first, what is a neural network, and how is this possible in the first place? Neural networks are a form of artificial intelligence that are loosely based on the way biological neurons work in our brains, and they can help computers to learn to perform tasks by looking at examples. For example, they're often used in image recognition where you want a computer to be able to identify what's in a photo. So let's say that you'd want your neural network to be able to tell you when a photo has a dog in it. To train the neural network to identify photos with dogs, you'd provide it with tons of example photos, some which contain dogs and some which don't, and label them as such. And given enough examples, the neural network would eventually learn to just tell you if a new photo it hasn't seen before has a dog in it or not. Now this can definitely get tricky in some cases, but let's say dogs look like food, but in general AI is pretty good at image recognition. Neural networks can also be used generatively to create something new given a bunch of examples, and that is what's happening with Jukebox. Jukebox learned to create music by looking at over 1 million human created songs and their lyrics. Previous work in this space really only looked at MIDI or other written forms of music to try to generate new music from that. And while that was cool, it didn't include vocals or different types of expressivity that you expect in real music. So that makes Jukebox really interesting. But can an AI really generate good music? And what does this mean for copyright? And who owns the songs that are produced by an AI if they're based on other artists' voices? There are definitely some tough questions around the space, but let's take a look at some of the songs it can generate. So first, let's check out a few of the curated samples that were chosen by the team that made Jukebox as their favorites. So the songs here in Unseen Lyrics were generated by Jukebox, but the lyrics were written by a different AI with some help from humans. We already listened to this classic pop song in the style of Frank Sinatra, which was pretty cool about hot tubs at Christmas time. So let's check out Jukebox's take on heavy metal. I like that riff. <laughs> And the synths going on. Sounds like something I might listen to. <laughs> so you know it's all that we all like. Don't you know it's all that we all right? It's really quite impressive how well it's able to mimic vocals and vocal styles. I don't know the band Rage actually, but the vocal style definitely sounds like a heavy metal band should, and you can understand most of the words. I mean, it definitely doesn't sound like it's a real vocalist, but it's very convincing, and that is really impressive to me. It's just pretty crazy that it's able to do this. I actually also really like some of the guitar riffs here. They definitely sound pretty cool. Let's see what rock in the style of Elvis sounds like. From dusty tiny tumble scarf, but the little hitch tells the heart. Hopefully sounds like Elvis. When my hair was sister fine. At last, when he woke up to the mine. It really does sound like someone is singing as Elvis and yeah, it's just it's pretty cool. I mean, again, you can definitely tell that the vocals aren't perfect. They're not exactly real sounding, but it's definitely mimicking his style and you know, it could just be a really poorly recorded Elvis recording and people might believe that. So yeah, pretty cool. So the songs here that are re-renditions were given lyrics from the actual band and then asked to create a new song in the style of that artist with the given lyrics. Let's check out some Disturbed. That sounds a little weird. Oh, there we go. I 
enemies unmistakably disturbed. Survivor sounds a little weird. Wow, that definitely sounds like Disturbed, as you can hear. Again, it's not super high quality sounding, and some of the words are kind of lost or muddled. Like, I think Survivor was really hard to understand. But the style of the music and the vocals and the instruments is all there. One thing to note is that because audio is so hard to work with and so computationally expensive to look through, they actually had to decrease the quality of the audio to work with it and then bring it back up to normal quality. So that does result in some noise and you can hear that in some of the samples. So here for completions, what they did was they gave the AI 12 seconds of an existing song and then asked it to generate the rest of the song in a given style. So you might recognize this song, Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. And let's see how well it did at generating the rest of the song. Wow. A little off, but again, that's quite impressive. Given 12 seconds of the original song, it did make something pretty similar sounding to the actual song. And I think this means we're about to get pranked by AI in the future. So outside of these curated examples, they also have a bunch of other ones you can browse through. So let's check a few of those out. So you can search by artists and genre, but let's check out some Linkin Park maybe. different so far. <laughs> this is so different than the original. You can definitely scream better than I could. It's kind of interesting but it sounds kind of circusy to me. <laughs> maybe a little too happy. <laughs> so it's really slowing down the vocals of the song, which is an interesting take on it. Definitely sounds pretty different than, than the actual artist and the original vocals, but yeah, it's interesting that it can do this. How about some hearts? It sounds like two vocals combined almost. I wouldn't say that's my new favorite heart song, but it did do pretty well replicating some of the vocal style of the band Hearts, but it did maybe mix some of the vocalists together at points and I don't know, it's interesting. It has a cool buildup. One thing the makers of Jukebox noted is that the music it generates doesn't follow typical structures you might see in human-made songs like repeated choruses or just repetition in general. So the music Jukebox generates is kind of all over the place doing different things constantly and that makes it, let's say, a bit less catchy than human-generated music. How about some ACDC? <laughs> Definitely have some guitar riffs. And the vocals. Definitely sound a little robotic. <laughs> this kind of sounds like if you were at a concert and did a really bad cell phone recording of the concert. It just kind of sounds like everything is through a bubble or like through sound surfing. I'm really focusing in a lot on the vocals because that is the most fascinating part to me because it's pretty crazy that they can mimic the actual vocal sound of human beings through this AI. It seems like it has an easier time with some artists and some genres of music. Like it did really well with Frank Sinatra and his vocal style, it sounded pretty real, but with some others it sounds a bit less so and it's a bit harder to understand. I think also it depends on the lyrics in the song because some words are definitely easier to understand than others. Now I have to check out Nightwish since they are one of my favorite bands. It's really impressive how many different artists and different styles they've incorporated into this. So the lyrics from this I think are from Passion of the Opera and so far it's not sounding very much like Nightwish or that song. I mean I guess it has the synths. It sounds like this is kind of looking at both the male and female vocals in Nightwish and combining them a bit. 
I don't know about this. That part sounds more Nightwishy. I feel like the end riff sounded pretty Nightwishy, and there are definitely some aspects that are there, like the synths and the guitars, but the vocals, I think, yeah, they combined two different singers together, and it sounds a bit, a bit weird. <laughs> Now this definitely has more of the Nightwish female vocal style down. The part's kind of cool. Now those were definitely some of the harder to understand lyrics, but it did kind of get the vocal style down and I like some of the things it did there. So those are some examples of what Jukebox can generate and I have to say it is super cool. Well, you can definitely tell in almost all cases that it is a computer singing and not a real human. It is pretty close in some cases and in general the music that it produces is super cool because it's doing it from scratch. It learned from tons of different songs from different artists, but it can create new music based on that in the style of different artists and different genres, and that is a huge step forward. Well, as I keep saying, I think Jukebox is super cool. Its ability to learn from and generate music in the style and even voice of different artists does bring up some interesting questions around musicians and copyright. If an AI can generate music based solely on the corpus of work of another artist, who owns that generated music? And is it even okay in the first place to use music like this without the permission of the original artist? Overall, this is basically a new frontier that copyright law is not exactly set up to handle. The researchers at OpenAI claim that this project falls under fair use because it's just for research purposes. But they're not claiming copyrights over the samples it produces. So who actually owns these samples? Who owns the song where Frank Sinatra is singing about Christmas and hot tubs? Is it the person who wrote the lyrics with the AI? Is it the open AI research team? Is it the estate of Frank Sinatra? Or is it even the AI itself? No one really knows. There are some related cases, but it's a largely unexplored area. Recently, actually, Jay-Z or his music publishing team took down a couple of YouTube videos that used AI or machine learning to mimic his voice reading different things. These videos definitely sound like him, but they are clearly marked as being machine generated and they aren't trying to deceive anyone. They were reinstated by YouTube, but who knows if they'll stay that way. Another potentially relevant case, but one that doesn't actually involve AI was in 1988 when Bette Midler had her voice impersonated by a human impersonator on a Ford Motor commercial without her permission. Ford initially approached her to ask her to perform a song in their commercial, but she refused and when she did, they hired a sound-alike singer to perform the song in place of her. The singer sounded almost exactly like her and since there was no visual of the singer performing the song, it wouldn't have been clear to a person watching the commercial that it wasn't Midler herself. And when she brought them to court, she won because the court ruled that it is illegal to imitate the voice of a famous singer because it's part of their identity and you can't do that without their consent. Now this is definitely a bit different because it was a commercial use where they were trying to deceive viewers into thinking that they were hearing an actual famous artist on the commercial. In general, there haven't been many cases in this area and even just various in general is a tricky one to navigate. So who will actually own AI music now and in the future and Will artists have to give permission for their music to be used in the training of these AI models? I'm not sure, I think it's something that will be decided in the coming years, but right now it's still definitely in the early research phases, so it's not so much of an issue. But it's definitely super interesting to think about, and let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts on this area. There's also still the question that often comes up of whether AI music can replace human-generated music. Will people in the future be more likely to purchase AI-generated music than music from actual human artists? I don't think so. I think it's likely that AI might help to augment human-generated music and help us to be more creative, but it seems unlikely that it will take over for us. The researchers who made Jukebox mentioned that they hope that in the future artists can use this as a tool so that they can use it to help them come up with new ideas and generate new music, not that it will replace them. So maybe in the future, if you're writing a song, writing a riff or a vocal melody and you get a bit stuck, you could work with an AI writing partner and work together to come up with something new and creative for the rest of your song. The code for Jukebox is actually freely available to check out, so in theory, 
anyone could play around with it. But there is a catch there in that it takes over nine hours to generate just one minute of music, and that's on a really powerful computer. Let me know in the comments what you think about Jukebox and the future of AI generated music. It's a super interesting area, and I think we'll see more coming in the future. If you'd like to check out more of the music that Jukebox produced, I'll have it linked in the description. I highly recommend going through and checking out some of your favorite genres and artists. I hope you had as much fun with this as I did. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, the touch of time as I like the tree this year will be